Hi, so tell me your name, uh, where you're from, and your background. Sure. I'm uh, David Fagenbaum. I uh, am an adjunct assistant professor of medicine at University of Pennsylvania. I'm also the co-founder and executive director of the Castleman Disease Collaborative Network. And how did you first become interested in Castleman disease? So during medical school, in my, my third year of medical school, when I was on rotation seeing patients, I uh, started experiencing some fatigue and night sweats. Uh, my lymph nodes started enlarging, and uh, I thought I had the flu, or I, I, honestly, I didn't know what was going on. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I went downhill pretty quickly and became really, really sick. By the time I went to the, the ER at the same hospital I'd been seeing patients at, I was, I was really sick at that point with organ dysfunction, liver, kidneys, bone marrow had shut down, and, um, and, I, and I got really sick. I had a retinal hemorrhage, I went blind in my left eye, I had a really, really sick period of time where I was in the ICU. And it was a scary time. It was about seven weeks of, of a really intense hospitalization. And fortunately, I survived that first episode um, only to be uh, back in the hospital about four weeks later with a relapse. And on that relapse, we did a lymph node biopsy and found out that I had multicenter Castleman disease, idiopathic HHV8 negative MCD. And um, I was very sick at that point. And uh, the doctor right away put me on one therapy for Castleman disease. But unfortunately, I didn't respond to it right away and got really e even more sick, so sick that my doctors uh, told my family to call on my priest and read me my last rites. So fortunately, I made it through my last rites, as, as you can see. And, Your first uh, rites, maybe. My, yeah, maybe that's, that's the first rites, that's right. The first of hopefully no more <laughs> for a while. So I um, made it through that, uh, started to improve gradually, and was eventually discharged from the hospital. But the, the long story short is that over a four and a half month period, I was hospitalized for, sorry, over a six month period, I was hospitalized for four and a half months, had my last rites read to me, received about seven different chemo drugs, and I came out of the hospital uh, on fire to try to figure this thing out. As a third year medical student, I had a little bit of knowledge about how diseases worked. I was interested in oncology, and all of a sudden now battling this deadly illness, I decided I wanted to get involved in the fight. And fortunately, I've done well over the last couple of years for the most part, but I've had two life-threatening relapses. And so I'm running full speed after this disease, and hopefully in the next year or two, we'll solve this thing. But for a while there, you thought that someone else was going to take up the torch and maybe do the research yeah. and figure this disease out. Uh, but then you started the CDCN. What, what changed there? That's a great point. So, so there was a period of time after I got out of the hospital and I was doing well where I felt like I trusted the biomedical research system. So as a medical student, I knew people did research. I knew that uh, there were people thinking about Castleman disease, and I really trusted that it would move fast enough. But it was actually when I relapsed for the first time after that, that really tough period that I realized that there were just so many unanswered questions and I also realized that not only were there a lot of questions, but the system wasn't moving in the right direction and wasn't moving in the right way. And so I had had some experience starting a previous nonprofit for grieving college students and building an organization through that. So I thought back to, the, to what I learned from building that network and trying to move forward progress and, and, and trying to think about the CDCN. And so we focused, instead of focusing on just raising money and awareness, we focus on what are the real problems in the system. So, so why isn't progress being made? Why is research moving slow? And then we dove full speed after that with the CDCN. So now that things are accelerating, uh, what are the things that you're most excited about? Maybe advancements, uh, not just in uh, you know, systems, but also in the research. That's a great question. So now that we know that the disease really is a disease of a hyperactivated immune system, uh, that causes uh, a subsequent uh, multi-system disease. Now, we, now that we have the right model, uh, we can start asking the right questions. And so there are three studies I'm really excited about. One is a viral discovery study where we'll look for novel viruses maybe that we've never discovered before that could be involved in triggering the disease. Also looking for small populations of malignant cells. And maybe there's, there's, uh, there are a few malignant cells driving this whole thing. Uh, and also looking in the blood to see what chemicals are, in, are elevated in Castleman disease patients like myself. So all three of those, I think that if we're able to launch those in the next year, we will tremendously move forward the pace of progress. But in parallel to doing that scientific work, 
we also need to start helping patients tomorrow. We need to generate clinical data, and so that's why we're building a registry. And with that registry, we'll be able to capture clinical data so we can start helping patients tomorrow instead of having to wait for the research studies to finish. So there are physicians out there treating patients, there are researchers, and then there are the patients themselves. Can you tell us how each of those uh, groups of people can learn more and get more involved? Absolutely. So um, you're exactly right. This is going to take a team effort. And so I was just at the patient, uh, the patient summit last night, and a theme that came up throughout the evening was this idea of Castleman's afflicted the wrong people, that it shouldn't have messed with us. It shouldn't have messed with me. It shouldn't have messed with Raj. It shouldn't have messed with any of us. But it did. And so we're teaming up as patients to take this on. And it also didn't mess. It messed with the wrong patients' doctors, because we've got a great team of physicians that are joining together. And, and when I think about what each group can do, so patients, we need to join together and be warriors. We need to join together to raise money, to raise awareness, and to provide tissue samples for these great researchers. The physicians need to take that ball and move it forward. So they need the tissue, they need the money, and they need the great ideas to move things forward. But we really need them not just to work in silos at their own institutions, but to collaborate and to share tissue samples with one another and to sh share ideas with one another. And then for the patients out there who are maybe recently diagnosed or looking for more information or maybe just you know, needing support, what would yeah. you say to them? Sure, so Castleman disease is a very heterogeneous disease, meaning that some patients can be very sick and some people cannot, can maybe have quite less symptoms. So when you look online and you see, you hear about this deadly disease, I know it can be really, really scary. And for some of us, some patients, it is very deadly. But for others, it's not quite so deadly. So um, try not to get too concerned or too afraid when you see um, some of the data and some of the statistics to know that it's a broad disease. At the same time, recognize that it's important and we all have an opportunity to really take our, own, our lives into our own hands. If we want to solve this disease, we can raise the money. The, the questions are there, the studies are there. And so we have an opportunity to fight back and to be a part of helping out other patients like ourselves. And then maybe tell us a little bit about the, the Warrior Challenge right now. Sure, so we're doing a really, really cool uh, social marketing campaign right now where, where we have patients get into their best warrior stance. And, and, and the warrior stance means you're, you're ready for war. So, so you're flexing in the stance, but it's also in the face. The warrior stance is really, really in the face. And so, so we, want, we want patients and loved ones physicians, researchers to show the warrior stance, and that's us showing the world, showing the castle man disease that, that we're going to take it on and that we're ready for war. Thank you, David. Thanks, Grant.